right, thank you for that. Our next speaker is Gerald Darnes, and slight variation on his LNO paper here, the title I am noticing. On the LNO paper, it's from midnight, from polar night to midnight sun. Oh, same thing over here. All right, well, thank you for your publication from 2017. Welcome, Gerald. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for sticking around for the, the end of uh, our session. As a reward, I will uh, tell you all about the uh, zooplankton fecal pellets in an IARTIC uh, uh, system. So, um, <laughs> so, early on in my studies, I uh, developed an interest for the, um, uh, the role zooplankton play in the um, biological carbon pump, in the functioning of a biological carbon pump, which is the set of processes leading to the export uh, to ocean depths of uh, ca uh, biogenic carbon produced in the photic zone. So this is, uh, th so I, and uh, there, there are different, uh, there, there are various ways uh, zooplankton processes uh, affect the, the fate of uh, carbon in the water column. And um, I first got interested in the, in the, um, active transport of carbon uh, via uh, vertical, uh, zooplankton vertical migrations, such as seasonal and uh, dial vertical migration. Uh, for instance, uh, I had uh, the opportunity to uh, participate in, um, in a large uh, overwintering uh, expedition in the Canadian Beaufort Sea, where we were able to um, to track the changes in the vertical distribution of zooplankton throughout an, an annual cycle. So this time, time depth section of uh, zooplankton biomass and respiration uh, showed that uh, zooplankton, uh, spend most, zooplankton biomass spend most uh, of, the, of the, the year uh, at depth, only surfacing uh, during the, 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 sum, the short summer period. Uh, with this uh, biomass and respiration data, we were able to, um, to estimate uh, an active respiratory uh, uh, transport of uh, carbon that uh, was comparable to, um, to the uh, sinking export of particulate organic carbon uh, at uh, 100 meters depth and at two or 200 meters depth. And this uh, active transport of respiratory carbon was mainly uh, due to the seasonal vertical migration of the phytoplankton grazers, uh, Calanus hyperboreus and Calanus glacialis. Uh, in a more recent paper uh, published in uh, LNO that uh, got me invited uh, to this session, uh, we, with the Norwegian collaborators, we looked into the, the role of uh, dial vertical mi migration of zooplankton in the transport of carbon in the high Arctic fjord. So, this, uh, on this uh, echogram uh, from an uh, acoustic zooplankton fish profiler, uh, the, the succession of uh, vertical, uh, vertical lines uh, um, illustrates very well this, uh, the, the suite, suite of um, dial vertical migration. Uh, from January to April. Uh, with biomass derived from the acoustic data and uh, uh, respiration measurements, we were also able to um, estimate an active carbon flux due to uh, dial vertical migration, and uh, it, it represented, this uh, active um, transport of carbon represented almost 30% of the particulate organic carbon uh, export um, from the surface layer. And this, uh, this uh, active transport was uh, mostly due to the dial vertical migration of uh, euphausids, like this uh, Tisanoisa uh, uh, krill. Uh, as opposed to um, the active transport of carbon, uh, this presentation will, uh, um, will uh, deal with the zooplankton processes affecting sinking export of carbon. And especially, uh, I would like to characterize this uh, carbon export uh, during the poorly studied uh, uh, 
um, period from uh, the polar night to spring. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, for, for, this, uh, for this project, we, uh, the, the data uh, was, um, was, uh, was collected as part of the Kongsfjord and Richfjord Observatory project. This is a Norwegian project that has been maintaining uh, moorings, oceanographic moorings, in uh, two Svalbard fjords uh, for uh, several years now. So um, the zooplankton sampling uh, was done using a um, multi-frequency uh, acoustic zooplankton fish profiler uh, that ensonified the uh, top 80 meters of the, of the water column. And um, we also used uh, various nets to, uh, to uh, collect uh, different size uh, of plankton, to identify them, and to measure them. It's, it's an uh, important um, uh, element for the estimation of uh, abundance and biomass uh, using the, the acoustics data. The particle sampling was done using an automated uh, sequential sediment trap uh, uh, deployed at 40 meters depth that sampled from January to uh, April 2014 and with a 3.5 day resolution. And the sediment samples were used to, uh, uh, to analyze, uh, to measure POC, uh, particulate organic carbon, and uh, the fecal pellets were counted, uh, identified, and uh, measured uh, to estimate uh, fecal pellet uh, carbon content. And the fluorescence uh, sensor at uh, 21 meter depth um, uh, recorded fluorescence over the annual cycle. <coughs> Sorry. So in the, um, on the echogram uh, at the top, the, uh, the, um, horizontal, the horizontal uh, line indicates the, the position of the sediment trap at the 40 meters depth. Um, so, the multi-frequency the, the multi analysis of the, echo, um, of the acoustics data allowed us to uh, differentiate three main zooplankton groups, the euphausids, the large copepods, and the uh, ketognats. So, in the, time, the three time series uh, uh, below the, the echogram um, show the, um, the zooplankton abundance in the, in the layer above the sediment trap. So the, the black square uh, illustrates the, the abundance at night, whereas the white square is, um, uh, illustrates the, the abundance at day. And uh, what we see is that there's a classical uh, DVM pattern for the euphausids and the ketognat meaning that the abundance uh, is higher at night in the surface than at day. However, there's a, there are signs of a reverse DVM uh, for the large copepods, and this was uh, quite uh, unexpected. Also, we didn't find any uh, temporal trend in the abundance of uh, zooplankton migrants in the, in the top uh, 40 meters, and from January to April. So the um, comparison between the profiles of uh, abundance profiles of uh, different uh, zooplankton uh, done uh, using uh, net, uh, net sampling uh, show, show us that, the, um, that it's the Kalanus uh, species that uh, made this uh, unexpected uh, DVL, D, uh, dial vertical migration. Another interesting uh, observation is that the um, that, uh, small and medium copepods uh, largely dominated the zooplankton assemblage uh, caught in the, with the nets, the plankton nets. Uh, whereas um, large copepods tended to dominate the zooplankton assemblage um, that, was, uh, that were trapped in the sediment trap. So some collaborators um, suggested that this, uh, this discrepancy between the net and the, and the trap uh, catchability uh, was, could be due to a net avoidance by larger organisms, 
I, but I don't think that's, uh, that's true. It uh, might be due to the selective trapping of uh, large migrant uh, uh, copepods by traps. Now, if we look at the, if we look at the, um, at the um, uh, sinking export of, uh, of uh, particulate organic matter, so the first, the first uh, panel show, shows the, that there was an increase in uh, the export of particulate organic carbon uh, starting as, uh, uh, as from uh, early, um, early March. And this uh, increase in uh, particulate organic carbon export was accompanied by a decrease in CN ratio. And, uh, this, uh, and this could be indicative of a fresher material uh, um, being exported. Uh, overall, there was a low contribution of krill exuvia to the carbon export. However, the numerous uh, exuvia found in the sediment, sam sediment trap samples indicate that krill were uh, molting during the, this winter period. But we don't know if it's due to a body shrink cage due to uh, the low availability of, uh, of food or, on, on the contrary, growth. Uh, there's, um, the appendicularian, appendicularian fecal pellets uh, made a very low contribution to the carbon uh, export. However, what's interesting is that there was a, a decrease in the appendicularian fecal pellet carbon export from the polar night to, uh, to early spring. And this is, in contrast, we see uh, um, an increase in fecal pellet carbon export uh, f f uh, due to the other uh, zooplankton fecal pellet uh, sinking as from March, as uh, we, have s uh, we had seen for the POC uh, export. The fecal pellet carbon export was largely dominated by copepod fecal pellets, and uh, this, the, p the particulate organic carbon export was essentially uh, made of uh, fecal pellets in, in early April. But what I found really interesting is that the, um, this increase in uh, fecal pellet uh, uh, export uh, occurred uh, well before the phytoplankton bloom and uh, before any, uh, any fluorescence could be measured uh, in the surface layer. So uh, we could think that the, the, the zooplankton uh, was able, uh, were able to, um, to control a small but uh, increasing pelagic primary production before the phytoplankton bloom uh, could kick in. The, the fecal pellet carbon export at uh, 100 meters depth in 2016 and 2017 did not show this, uh, this increase uh, at the end of, the, uh, at the end of uh, March. And uh, if we look at the, at the situation, the uh, fecal particulate organic uh, carbon export in a sea, uh, sea ice covered uh, area in the Beaufort Sea, we also don't see uh, an increase in winter of the fecal pellet carbon export. So one explanation is that the, the, the increase in, uh, in fecal pellet carbon exports uh, at 40 meters depth was, uh, could be attenuated uh, before it reached uh, 100 meter depth. The active respiratory transport by DVM that we measured in our LNO paper uh, was as of the same magnitude as the fecal pellet carbon export that we, uh, that, uh, from this, uh, the, the present study. However, uh, Creel dominated the um, active respiratory transport uh, by DVM, whereas uh, uh, large calanus uh, dominated the fecal pellet carbon export. But if we look at the, uh, but the, 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 the fjord in Kongsfjord uh, as a mixed layer, mixed uh, water column uh, in winter. Thus, the, um, the active respiratory transport by DVM is just a 
potential flux. It's not, it cannot be considered in a, as, a, as a real flux in, a, in this situation. Thus, one could consider that this, the, the, um, that the, the active transport, that the, um, uh, sorry, the fecal pellet carbon flux is, um, is more important than active respiratory transport in, uh, in such a situation. So to conclude, uh, this, uh, the, this uh, study um, reveals a winter active uh, pelagic food web in a high arctic uh, fjord system uh, where zooplankton uh, perform DVM, feed, and possibly control a low primary production before the phytoplankton bloom. And we, there is a major contribution of zooplankton uh, fecal pellet to the sinking export of uh, POC from the surface layer prior to, uh, to this phyto phytoplankton bloom. And what is really, what I found really interesting is this reverse DVM by kalanoscopepods and this opposite DVM patterns of the main grizzles that are Calanus uh, species and uh, euphausids may have potential uh, implications for uh, sinking export as their fecal pellets have uh, different uh, characteristics. So the one next step for this study is to verify the Calanus uh, reverse uh, dial vertical migration is uh, recurrent and happens elsewhere and how it can affect carbon export. Thank you for your attention.